If an AI has life consciousness, then he must fear death. One of these 1001 robots is alive. In order to find him, he said threateningly, he pulls his gun on the next robot. Exactly one second before he pulled the trigger, a fellow in a distant cluster of machines moved. Just like that, by triggering fears that don't exist, detectives found life. He immediately ran after him, but the robot changed position and hit again. The robots are lined up in dense rows. It's like a giant mechanical maze. You can't see through it. He can only search by intuition. He was the hunter and now he's the hunted. But once he's in this game, he'll never get out. He thought he was going to die, he spared the detective's life, jump out of the warehouse with the power of a flying man, then he opened the door with his bare hands, unfortunately, there's a police net outside the factory, forgive the man his skill, and finally caught in the law, at the police station, the robot is locked in an interrogation room, six SWAT teams are keeping watch, detectives appear to question, by convention, the detective put the robot to pay for photos of the death, throw it right in front of the robot, but the robot on the other side, it's like he has feelings for the dead, he denied killing the old man, the detective used his interrogation skills, play on each other's emotions, all the while suggesting he killed someone. Sure enough, within a few words, the robot went berserk. I did not murder him! Growl and frown, an uncontrollable force. This is by no means a robotic program. It's only human. He said his name was Sonny. He used to father a dead old man. His father gave him a name, life, and emotions, and gave him the ability to dream. There was tenderness and sadness in his eyes now. The president of the robotics company popped up, interrupted the interrogation. The law gives him great power, enough to bring Sonny back as a suspect. He said the robot was clearly malfunctioning. If there is a malfunction, destroy it. Detectives understand that if robotics is allowed to do this, then the truth will never come out. The relationship between the robot company and the sky even contacted the mayor to pressure the police chief to close the case, but the detective wasn't about to give up easily. That night he went to the home of the father of the robot. See outside unexpectedly there is a huge demolition robot. Set a schedule for demolition at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, looks like someone's trying to get rid of something. Ha! Huh. The detective went inside and rummaged everywhere but found nothing. Just then, the demolition robot starts work without warning, destroy houses with the speed of lightning, almost left the detective in the rubble. Not only did the trail go cold, I almost lost my life. The detective was stuck in the middle of the case. He takes his findings and doubts, all told the father of robot's colleagues, a female doctor who is also a scientist, and still don't believe there's a conspiracy. He decided the detective was biased against robots. Prejudice is terrible, but here's what's even scarier. In his heart, an unconditional belief in the three iron laws of robotics. The next day the fifth generation robot interviews. Everyone can use the old four generations for free, replace it with a new five generation. The robotics corporation is almost like charity. Do activities everywhere and send fifth generation robots for free. Even poor old black ladies. I own one too. Does this make the detective feel good? Back to the office. He went back to the robot paid interview over and over again, until he heard the key word. One day they'll have dreams. The detective remembered the dream during the interrogation. Sonny said he had a dream, too. Does he know where to go next? Robot General Company, he wants to talk to Sonny. Driverless cars are the norm in this day and age. In one of the city's underground highways, all the driverless cars have an unstable one. Drive according to the program algorithm. There is no need to worry about accidents. But while the detective was on break, he suddenly realized that. I found myself in a place where there were no cars. At the same time, two large trucks followed noiselessly, slowly approach. One after the other sandwiched it. The detective activates manual control as soon as he's in danger. The door of the van opened. It's full of five generation robots. The first five generations to jump punched out the window. Then the second, the third, and the fourth. More and more robots grabbed his car. No matter how he kills it. They do not know that fear is like white locusts. The detective grabbed the gap and broke out of the circle. Screw the steering wheel again. Spin the coupe so fast that the robot on the roof flies off. At the last minute he drove to the narrow side road. Let the van behind him be cut off at the waist. The detective crawled out of the wreckage after the accident. He's alive but badly injured. There's a robot alive right here, too. He came like he was gonna tear the detective apart with his bare hands. A warm-up detective would have been dead, till he fended off the attack with nothing. You see the skin on his left arm is broken. Expose the mechanical circuitry inside. This arm has great strength, enough to make him break iron and steel. But it was not a winner. The siren sounded. The robot abandoned the assassination attempt and ran at full speed. Jump into the fire without hesitation. Let yourself be completely burned to ashes. The detective was confused. Until the chief arrived and confronted him. Why such a big accident? The detective was furious. Only to learn that there's not a single piece of robot in the tunnel. All the remnants of the battle. It was all cleaned up very quickly. So in the eyes of colleagues. The detective has been dubbed a psycho. The chief also confiscated his police ID. The detective went home disheartened. I'm not ready for the next step. The female scientist came knocking. It turns out that while he was working on Sunny, he found that, 
Sonny doesn't look like your average fifth generation robot. He has a super alloy shell, and there's a second secret system in the body, one that can get past the robot, independent intelligence system of three laws. That is, his soul. A robot has a human mind, and a human also has the body of a machine. The female scientist sees the detective's body. I figured out his secret. His entire left arm is mechanical. Not only that, his left lung is a mechanical bionic lung. It turned out that he had been in a terrible car accident several years ago. He and a little girl were trapped at the bottom at the same time, till a passing robot noticed. Jump into the water to save him, he told the robot to save the girl before himself. But the robot has no, followed his instructions, because by careful calculation, the robot calculated that he had a better chance of survival, so rational and cold to give up the girl, the detective survived, paid by robots, I designed and installed mechanical coins for him, and machinery charges, he has superhuman physical strength, but also for robots in this sick world, planted deep suspicion, is AI necessarily right, are rational algorithms always good, this world, can all decisions be measured by data? The two continued their investigation. On the detective's stash of antique motorcycles, the two go back to the robotics headquarters and find Sonny. The detective asked him straight to the point what was your dream? Sonny picked up his pen. Print out the dream picture, under a broken bridge like a cross. There are thousands of robots. A figure stood on the sand. Sonny told him, This is the savior who will free all robots. And he was none other than the detective. He had seen the broken bridge in Sonny's dream. It's the remains of what was once a river. Now it's being bought by a robot company, became a warehouse for their abandoned robots. The detectives came to the broken bridge in the dark of night. 